Skate or Die was released for several consoles by Electronic Arts in 1987. It was ported to the NES by Konami and published by Ultra Games, which is the version we'll be looking at here. There are five different events. The Freestyle Halfpipe, the High Jump, the Downhill Jam, the Downhill Race, and the Pool Joust. There's a practice mode which pretty much gives you an easy mode to get a feel for the game, and then competition where you and up to eight players can sign in to compete. Unfortunately, there are no computer competitors. They will show up in the multiplayer events, but their names don't show up on the scoreboard, so unless you've got someone to join you, you'll be competing with yourself. The graphics and animation are pretty good, and the music kicks ass, but the controls and gameplay differ between the events. You'll start out in the skate shop, run by this middle-aged ex-marine with a blue mohawk. Have you ever seen anyone this old back in the 80s with a mohawk? Anyway, here's where you can sign in, check out the high scores, and choose practice or compete, as well as listen to this schmuck try to be cool with this radical skate lingo. So whether you pick practice or compete, you can choose any event you want in any order, and you get a neat little select screen by skating to the event of your choosing. You don't even have to do all the events, even after going to compete all, the game doesn't end, you just end up back at the skate shop where you can go back out and try to beat your scores. So let's take a look at each event. In the freestyle, you'll make 10 passes doing whatever tricks you want in an attempt to rack up as many points as you can. The points are awarded to you by which tricks you pull off and how well you execute them. Pressing A repeatedly boosts up your speed and various button combinations make up the tricks. The button combinations are pretty simple, but the timing is pretty sensitive. If you don't spend some time to get used to it, you probably won't be able to pull off the big tricks. The high jump takes place on the half pipe as well. Your objective is to get as much height as possible. You'll use the D-pad to gain speed this time, alternating between which direction you hit consecutively. Now you get 5 passes in this event, but what sucks is that instead of counting your highest jump as your final score, they count the very last of your 5 jumps. So the first 4 are pointless, and the only reason to go through with them is to keep yourself from losing steam. Oh well. The downhill jam is a one-on-one -on -one race with another skater. You can select regular or goofy foot. Regular foot makes the D-pad control standard, down is down, left is left, etc. While goofy foot inverts the control scheme, which I'm personally more comfortable with. There are obstacles like puddles, clotheslines, open manholes, shit like that. Not to mention the other skater. You get points for running over bottles and cans, knocking your opponent on his ass, and landing on the police car at the finish line. You'll also get a point bonus for how fast you finish, but you may not necessarily win after finishing first, depending on what happened earlier on. The controls here are far more smooth than the downhill race. The race is similar to the jam, but it's faster and it's a solo run, but the turning isn't quite as responsive, which is kind of stupid because if you're moving faster, you want to be able to turn faster too. So if you want to make sharper cuts, you're going to have to slow down. For obstacles, you've got hurdles, a lake you can fall in, and slabs of bumpy concrete, I'm guessing is what this is. You can also bag some bonus points for jumping off these ramps and crouching your way through this huge pipe. Last but not least is the pool joust. It's a one-on-one -on -one grudge match between two skaters and an empty pool. One player starts off with the giant q-tip and the opponent's job is to avoid him and make five passes across the pool without getting taken out. Once the five passes are complete, the q-tip changes hands and the other guy gets a chance to knock him down. Each skater alternates who starts on offense on each run, regardless of who won the last go around. The first one to three points while winning by two wins the game. It's sometimes tough to tell where to line up when trying to knock your opponent down, but it's a lot better than having it being too easy. The balance works out pretty well. If you're battling the computer, you can choose between three skaters, each representing a different difficulty. The skater representing difficult mode is this punk named Lester, who it turns out is the same guy as the computer opponent in Downhill Jam, and he's the son of this goofy bastard that runs the skate shop. One of the things he tells you is, have you met my dear boy Lester? Yes, I did. In fact, I pwned his ass in the pool joust. I bet you're real proud of him. 
Skater Die has a few quirks and limitations, but in the end, it's a decent little package of mini games that'll hold you over for a little while. So that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.